Hey everybody, I hope you're doing great. I am doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The goals are about electronic addiction, YouTube, TikTok. Um, there's a lot of diversity here actually. Um, I'm gonna read the goals here in just a moment. I wanna thank you, the client, so much. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you for sharing what you got going on there, reaching out for some support and perspective. I'm excited to see what we discover. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube. So here's your goals. You say, hi, Abby. I really enjoy watching your videos. I could use some help. I have a bad habit of scrolling through YouTube and TikTok for hours. I know this isn't healthy, I often wonder if there is something I'm looking for. I do learn a lot, but I don't feel fulfilled. I like to heal what is attracting this addiction and get to know myself better. I can't deny I struggle with self-worth and depression. Now I'm curious about my past lives and who I am as a soul. I think it would be meaningful to get perspectives on all this. Thank you, Abby. I'm immensely looking forward to what you have to say. And you're welcome to share on YouTube. Thank you for all your kind words. I'm glad I could be part of your electronic addiction. <laughs> a part of your YouTube and TikTok scrolling. Okay, so give me a moment here. So you have a bad habit of scrolling through YouTube and TikTok for hours. And you're picking up on this isn't healthy. It's out of balance. And you, this is interesting. You're wondering if there is something you're looking for. It's like you're looking, you're scrolling, you're looking for something. And you're noticing it just, it's not fulfilling to do this. this. This behavior is not fulfilling. So it's an addictive thing. It's not creating fulfillment. You know this isn't, this isn't, something isn't right about this. Okay. And you seem to be paralleling that maybe there's a self-worth um, depression side of who you are that might be attracting this as well. Okay. This is all good material. I mean, all very interesting. So you're curious about past lives and who you are as a soul. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Scrolling. YouTube, TikTok stuff going on there. Okay, self-worth. What are you looking for? We got self-worth, depression. Um, curious about past lives, who you are uh, as a soul. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I give you a gold star. It's a really good, um, really good goals here. So I'm just kind of acclimating to, it's like a, a tree with many branches here. And so I'm just acclimating to all the pathways and how we can just blend this together and create a really meaningful experience for you. Okay, so number one on the list is you're concerned about this habit with electronics, okay. Okay, I'm sending that out to the universe right now. What is it that you're looking for deep down inside? Like, what is it that you really are looking for? Are you looking for YouTube and TikTok? Or are you looking for a message on YouTube and TikTok? Are you looking for fulfillment on YouTube and TikTok? <sighs> Are you looking for the meaning of your soul? Maybe your past lives on YouTube and TikTok. Maybe you're looking for yourself on YouTube and TikTok. But something isn't fulfilling, so it's not really, you're not reaching that level that you're hoping to. It's just not balanced. I mean, it's just not getting you where you want to go in life and in your relationship with yourself. Okay. You just have to go through all of this and make sure I have full alignment with every path and how we want to express it here to the universe. So then when we receive the echoes back, we can really gain here some perspective and healing and all that good stuff. Okay. Okay. Instantaneously, and it's without a doubt, there's a very strong sense that Literally, they show me a phone and they turn off the phone and they toss it. And it's pretty strong. Stop. It's pretty strong, okay? <laughs> it's a little disorienting. Because it's such a jolt, you know? 
It's like flying down the freeway, suddenly flying out the windshield of your car. It's like such a jolt. Like one minute this, next minute that. It's like comfortable phone, enjoying um, what I'm watching. And now suddenly the phone is turned off, thrown away. And it's like one minute this, the next minute that. But the encouragement is no more cell phone. And they show me even you should hand in your phone. Just, just hand in your phone and get something that doesn't uh, give you access to apps like just texting and phone calls as much so as that I mean the straight up pretty loud and clear get yourself uh, an old school phone <laughs> what do they call those these days I don't even know what they're called these days a phone that is perfect for for calls and texts okay <laughs> And, uh, and vibrationally, it says you do need to take a break from this. You don't just need to lightheartedly take a break. You need to hardcore take a break. You need to hardcore take a break. Yeah, they, they want to stay on this note here. They want to stay in this vibration. They're kind of like giving you the intense eyes that you have to, you need to. This is important. For you to, to next level, level up, upgrade yourself, um, you need to get, just disconnect from that phone. As disconnected as you could get, okay? Is it's distracting you. It, and it's not, it's more than distracting you. It's more than distracting you. You're losing yourself inside of it. Actually, they show me, they show me you're looking at the phone. The phone is looking back at you like it's a person. And you're losing yourself inside of this. And it's, it's just a mirror, right? So everything in our life is a mirror. And so the foods that we eat, the, the house that we clean or don't clean, the cars we choose, our cell phones, and all this is this a mirror, right? And so it's helping us to get to know ourselves. So something about this mirrored contraption, right? You, you're, you're diving, actually diving into it. This is very interesting. I mean, I see you inside your phone, okay? And that means if you're inside your phone, you're not in your body and you're not paying attention to the outer world. You, you, have, to, you have to be present in the world that we live in. And it seems to me that you, you want to be present in the world that we live in, but then I kind of wonder how much so do you want to? Because even learning about past lives and learning about your soul is really getting to the heart of who you are. Um, but that we got to focus on you right now in the present. So if we focus on you right now in the present, is that a boring place to be? Is that a dull place to be? Perhaps that's depression and self-worth right there. You know what I mean? Um, so little old you in present day earth life without the cell phone or even without knowing past lives or or genuinely more about your soul if all you had was you in this world it, it, it seems to me that that is an agony maybe you're looking for fulfillment in life and you can't find it in life so the phone provides it for you but the phone doesn't provide it for you either so now you're struggling here to figure out where you could access true fulfillment and I think it's an excellent sort of life journey to be on. I mean, we're going to have a conflict. We're going to have th things to do. We're going to have things we're going to have to let go of. We're going <laughs> to have challenge along the way of self-discovery, finding fulfillment. Is it under this rock here? <laughs> I just like see this cartoon. This person is looking for fulfillment and they're like turning over every stone trying to find fulfillment. <laughs> it's a good it's a good little cartoon image. <laughs> trying to find fulfillment. Where are you? Under this stone? No. <laughs> Why isn't it under there? <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, let me see here. Okay. Yeah, okay, there's going to be some work to do because I uh, the next thing I'm being shown is that okay, the, there it's kind of like any addiction, right? Um, when the addiction goes bye-bye, you are living with yourself and you have to come back to yourself. There's an agony involved in it, okay? Because the addiction was creating a coping tool. It was creating a, 
something that was warm and comfortable, I suppose. <laughs> and then when warm and cozy is gone bye-bye, it's like the cold, harsh reality of myself. Okay. So I am showing that um, when you choose, which this seems to be, you're going to need time to make this decision. And I don't, I, it's, I mean, you're going to, obviously the session is going to give you an opportunity to really reflect on what you're ready for. Okay. What you're ready for right now. And if you could so much as just take ownership of it as quickly as possible and straight up, just separate yourself from it. Um, for as long as you possibly can, you're doing yourself a service. Okay. You're doing good for yourself. And in making that decision, they're showing me you're in agony without your phone. Okay. They're showing me you, you are in agony without your phone. So it, it, it really is an addiction. I mean, <clears throat> this is really showcasing it is an addiction. When we don't have the thing, then we're missing something important to us. It's gone. Can't get it back. Um, cell phone, you could probably get it back if you want to, but if you truly want to let go of the addiction, you're going to have to live in cold, harsh reality. It's going to feel cold, okay? It's going to feel perhaps boring, uh, more unfulfilling than ever. You're not going to be sure what to do with your time, perhaps. Uh, so they show me phone disappeared and you're just, it's just like driving you nuts, okay, without it. But what's happening in that time where you're really struggling to live without your phone is you're healing. You, you don't just watch YouTube or TikTok. You actually project your consciousness, your emotions, your heart, your sacral chakra. Like you project your energy field inside the device. Like you, you don't just watch. You actually take everything that you are and like go on a vacation inside your phone, okay? So this is next level, all right? And so you're going to have to learn how to come back into you and then you're going to have to turn off the phone. Like that's how the first step to correcting this. I just keep seeing, I mean, you full-fledged jump in there. Everything is in there. I mean, it's almost like it's a relationship, like you, you're, you're completely yourself with your phone. You're completely yourself. Your phone could very well be the best friend you've ever had in your whole life because the phone isn't going to um, talk back to you. It, it's like it's completely your freedom to explore how you want to explore and learn what you want to learn without anybody talking back or telling you no or whatever. It gives you this sense like you are free. It gives you freedom. That makes you very sad. If something in life has caused you to, to need the YouTube and the TikTok, when you actually need real human exchange, you know? We're in the process here where we're looking at the step where you let go of your phone and you're really struggling with it. And in this struggle, you, you're actually pulling your energy back into your body. You're pulling it back into your body and your body seems to be the one place you don't want to be. This is important. No wonder you want to know about past lives and soul stuff because you... you you don't You would rather be anywhere but in your human body on present day earth. You'd rather be anywhere but here. You'd rather be perhaps anywhere or anyone maybe than yourself. So that, that too is a clue to understanding where the habit's even coming from in the first place. You know what I mean? changing and I mean I'm kind of experiencing still the same we're still stuck on the step where you're trying to come back to yourself and it's something seem very uncomfortable here I see your body kind of developing strange growths okay 
without the phone, you acclimating to yourself, it's developing a weird response. Like you're getting bumpy, like you're getting um, like bulgy. Your body, your skin has these huge mounds growing out of it. And you, you feel like you're being dissolved from the inside out. This is a true addiction, to be honest. This is how we react when we have that thing that we like to spend a lot of time on and we make it go away and we start to feel like we're dying inside without it. Even if it is killing us on some level, it could be addicted to a drug and obviously here, TikTok, YouTube, tube, is it killing you? It's, but it is dis disconnecting you your ability to be human and live in the world, right? And and how many hours are you on TikTok, YouTube versus actually engaged with the world around you? You know what I mean? So, um, so there is an agony like um, in acclimating to life without your phone and you feel like you're dying. I mean, you feel like there's cancerous tumors growing all over you and you can't breathe, you can't, this is, you can't live. You must have a void that you're trying to fill. There has to be. I mean, you're, you're acknowledging there's, there is this uh, depression, self-worth stuff, and you're looking for something which seems to be fulfillment, but you, there, there has to be some kind of void in there, you know, um, that you're trying to fill with this, um, this phone, the YouTube, TikTok stuff. <coughs> Just a second. There's just a release of energy from the heart through the throat and out. So self-expression from the heart. Uh, again, we're clearing out this addictive energy. You're basically dying right now, okay? <laughs> Without the and I keep saying phone, but I, I realize I mean it could be a laptop or it could be like a sweet setup, like you have a giant TV and a free and desktop computer. I don't know, but they they keep showing me this phone and they show <coughs> tossing it away. <coughs> I, I feel like I'm gagging. I'm going to puke my heart out. Uh, again, you're on the ground. You're in agony. And you're covered in cancerous tumors. You're dying inside. This is you pulling all your energy back to yourself. This is you coming back into yourself. I tell you it's safe to be you in present day life. <laughs> so exciting. Okay. Okay, this is getting better. This is getting better. I mean, you have a terrible hangover. You have a horrible headache. You're basically d depressed beyond depression. I mean, this is like somebody stabbed you with a scissor in the heart. I see it. A scissor picked up and a, a psycho child just stabs you in the heart and it stabs you in the lungs and you can't breathe. And it feels like you have a hole in your lungs and a hole in your heart. And you, you, you can't sleep and you're tossing and turning and you're tossing and turning and you're tossing and turning. You can't sleep. Even the darkness of night is too bright for some reason. You can't seem to even find a comforting night experience like you I just see it's like a flashlight shining in your eyes even when you're trying to sleep at night um, when it's supposed to be quiet and peaceful and you're tossing and turning and tossing and turning there's a really gross being that just comes finally it just I don't know why, but it poops out your heart, okay? I said there's a hole in your heart, a hole in your lungs, but it's it's pooping, like, literally the image is that, is like your heart is a butt that just poops out of freaking demonic being, okay? Oh, man. I mean, this being actually is quite, uh, I mean, it's a very good drawing of your classic demon, like the horns, red skin, um sharp teeth and all that kind of goat like really why is your heart why is that your heart though they 
my guides often use these like weird play on words and weird images to help us understand what your heart's going through. So if your heart is literally turning into a butt that's going poop, you know, and it poops out this demon, this is what you have up, you're up against all of this here. So you can see why the message is so hardcore that you have to turn this off. You have to disconnect from this YouTube TikTok, okay? You have to because it it is um, you you're on the money here that something isn't right in your relationship with it because it's it's not healthy. You're right. It's it's like it's not just not healthy. It's just like it's freaking totally not healthy <laughs> for you. It's like mega not healthy. I mean, it's like hardcore drugs. Okay, demon influence. All that not healthy, okay? Now that that just demon's just standing here, we're in a dark bedroom basically and it's really bright in here and you can't sleep is what the scene is. And there's this demon here. You're trying to ignore it. You're trying to act like it's not there. I have to understand what you, what the proper response is to this. I mean, are you supposed to acknowledge that it's there? Can we just move on from it? What What is this about? You're dizzy and you're nauseous. You're starting to throw up. And I just, I'm kind of ignoring this demon myself because I'm focused on what really matters is helping you feel better. The demon will go away on its own. But I do like to at least give you a little bit of comfort that I, usually if a demon pops up in someone's session, I like to give them a little bit of conscious comfort <laughs> about that. But right now in the scene, I am focused on helping you get through this, okay? And I'm sitting with you, I'm holding your hand, you're throwing up, you're sweating like crazy, you can't sleep, you're in agony. Alright, so I'm going to let that part of me stay with you and I'm just going to focus on this, whatever just came out of your heart. I'm going to become it for a minute, I'm just going to move my consciousness into it so I can understand it's existence oh it basically inside itself it's um you're weak basically you're very weak and it's laughing because it likes watching you in pain and it knows you're going to come back you always come back so it's not worried about it it's not threatened you're just a it's, it's almost like um I, I, it's very sad to me, but, uh, I see a woman who keeps going back to an abusive relationship and, um, the abuser says, you'll, you always come back. You'll always come back. I'm not worried about it. You'll always come back. This is a uh, abusive. This is, uh, you'll always come back to this. Because you're weak. I mean, it says you're weak. Like, it says very matter of fact. It doesn't feel threatened at all. And it, in fact, it, it likes watching you suffer. So if you're going to try to disconnect and then you go through a state of suffering only to waddle your way back, it's just a funny... Um, it's pathetic and funny. So what I do is I um, take your suffering and I put it into this being so that you there is no separation. That now the being is vomiting and feeling like cancer is growing all over it and it can't sleep and it can't uh, feel, feel peaceful here in a human life. And so I'm allowing this consciousness to have this experience now. This thing just starts screaming. Like it just starts screaming like it's being burned alive and it can't ever die. It just starts screaming. It starts to shatter this whole scene. It just starts screaming and, and I t apparently I'm torturing it. <laughs> it's so funny how it works, you know? 
The torturer doesn't want to be the tortured, of course. <laughs> it's okay torturing others, but gosh darn it, if you're going to torture the torturer, you're going to get a really big crybaby. <laughs> Bigger crybaby. <laughs> So it's just, it's just screaming and I, I don't know why I see eyeball soup and it's in a, a bath and there's just full of uh, pulled out eyeballs and this thing is just screaming and its skin is burning and that, that's what I see. Okay, my gu guides say just let, just hold this in place because this demon it needs to really digest your your suffering so that it can experience the suffering inside of itself and then the demon can make a decision for itself what it wants to do so there can be a proper um disconnect from the both of you okay this demon is basically begging you to get your phone back and stop being a fool you need your phone and it's it's in it in all of its heart if it, you could say it has a heart with all of its passion wherever that exists and all of its passion it is desperately asking you to get your phone back to stop being a fool and stop playing games because I, I keep seeing that keep seeing this as a phone okay i keep seeing this as a phone i keep seeing it as a phone and i'm like okay laptop okay computer it's like phone it seems like easy access i bet you that's what it is is easy access a phone is freaking pretty easy access i mean you can take that in your car you can take that to work you can <laughs> take that thing everywhere with you easy access right so okay don't give in to that, okay? Don't give in to a weakness. It's an urge to just, you're going to be fine. You've been off your phone for, you know, easy access for a week or two weeks. No, you, you literally straight up need a freaking full year, if not more. That's, that's how out of whack this has gotten. I didn't expect this. I, I've never witnessed it to this degree. So thank you for introducing me to what that an electronic addiction to literally to YouTube TikTok can look like and not everybody's going to be susceptible to it so you are susceptible to it okay and you do need support in this I do want to honor your curiosity about past lives and understand more about your soul but we also need to make sure I want to come full circle on this whole and because this is some major energy healing from deep down inside up to the surface. OK, this is going to give you an edge when the time comes that you say I'm ready because you're going to watch this and then you're going to say, am I ready? Oh, my gosh, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is serious. Um, and then you ask if you're ready and, and then if you can follow through with it be prepared. It's going to be hard. Okay. Um, but stay, stand your ground because you're going to better your life in every way by doing this. Anybody who has the courage to stop an addiction is going to be blessed in life. Okay. So I just see that hold, hold steady and be serious about it for as long as you can. And we're talking months, even years even the rest of your life, if possible. I know that's kind of sounds extreme, but that's, they're showing me that right now. Okay. And you know, that hole in the heart and the lungs as this demon is not fed anymore because you're not feeding it through you diving into the, the electronics here. Um, I see it turning into a black goo, basically a steaming hot pile of black goo. And when that happens, I start to see the hole in your heart mending and the hole in your lungs mem mending. But for some reason, the scissor is still here and the psycho child that wants to stab you in the heart. So what is this about? I don't know. I see a reindeer. I see Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. I see the reindeer stands upright. I see cartoons. Specifically about Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. And I try to show the child the cartoon. The child's really unhappy about something. It doesn't know what else to do and it's trying to get your attention. 
and you don't know how to understand what the child's saying to you. I really don't want to do this, but... I need, I need to find a, a proper way to create the communication. I, I have some different ideas, but I'm just going to wait and see what other ideas come up here. You're, you're totally tuned out to this child. Like, you're not going to listen to it at all. Oh, man. There's something of your innocence that y you need to... Your innocence is what is going to fulfill you. It is your innocence. It's your inner child. It's your creativity. It's the cartoons. It's the playfulness. They'll actually bring meaning back into your life. It's like as fun as going to Chuck E. Cheese, you know, have some pizza and some birthday day cake and play some games. I love Chuck E. Cheese. I think it's such a fun place to go. It's like great for kids' birthdays. And I, as an adult, freaking love it. And they have awesome pizza and awesome cake there. You, you need to kind of fulfill your life w with um, childlike experiences. I know it's, it, it's as crazy as, but I don't think it's that crazy. Going and flying a kite. Watch some Mary Poppins. Um, go, like... Be a kid and just get a small cone. Maybe put some chocolate coating on it or something. Like, But it's something a parent might get a kid without overdoing it. You know what I mean? It's just, and let it melt down your chin. I mean, there's something about you remembering the child within you. You, you it sounds kind of strange to take an adult and have them act like a four-year-old or something. It's just chocolate, you know, it's like vanilla dripping down the face. But I'm telling you, these experiences are going to heal you, are going to heal you. You're really sad. You, you're starting to cry from the heart. Me talking about it is giving voice to this child and the heart is weeping. Really, I feel the child inside of you is weeping. It's really affecting my head. It's making me feel hot all over my body. Making me feel tired too, but... It's like, um, because there's a lot of work being done, there's a lot of energy work going happening here. There's a lot that we've witnessed and I've vibrationally felt you go through. And even to transform that demon and to even feel you working through it, the demon working through it, all the freaking noise of letting go of an addiction is a lot, okay? Then the, the scissor and the screaming child, like, there's a lot of noise here. And it's, it's finding silence and peace. You don't, you, you're going to find that life is fulfilling without the electronics. I think more than a person that doesn't have an electronics addiction. Because you know what it's like to get lost in the addiction and then to overcome the addiction itself to really embrace life on a level that somebody without the addiction may not have been introduced to. So there's a lot of potential for you to gain fulfillment more than you can imagine. So that um, just conversation about childlike spirit and doing childlike things that bring joy to your heart, uh, something very youthful to you, okay? Let's see if I can just throw in some kind of past life, something quick. Um, is there anything your guides, higher self, would like to showcase about your soul? Just to give you a little bit of feedback about your soul and things you've done in other lifetimes, maybe that would be helpful for this addiction scenario um, or just in general. Let's see here. Well, I didn't expect this, but... You have an aspect of yourself that stands very short. Okay, 
and is standing in front of a doorway that is like a mouse. It's like cartoons again, and it's like Tom and Jerry, and there's the mouse hole. There's a little short version of you that stands in front of the mouse hole and blocks it. There's um, this... Um, it's an odd... Um, the scene is odd, like about perspective. So when I go into the scene, I feel like I'm getting smaller the closer that I get to you and this mouse hole. Um, but if I'm looking from here, you just look very small, but you're actually normal height and the mouse door is actually a normal sized door. But you have an aspect of yourself that is standing in front of the doorway and is very protective of it. This seems to have something to do with me accessing lifetimes. So I have to work on what is blocking your inner selves from wanting, from completely wanting this. Because this does not want me to see a past life. Because I feel like it's going to bring light to your heart and something doesn't want that. I, I literally take a cosmic hand and move this insecure um, little dweeb. I don't know, I just call it an insecure little dweeb and I just toss it away. I take away this perspective energy distortion and then I allow this door to be normal size. I stop, say stop playing games on yourself. It's like you're playing games with yourself. Stop playing games with yourself. Don't do that to yourself. Okay? It's a hole in your heart again. Um, they want me to keep looking. When I walk through, immediately I see you on a, a, a surgery table and I see there's lots of doctors and they're investigating what they're seeing in your heart. And it's like a cigarette burn. It's not showing me any past lives yet. There's something you don't want to look at, but you really need to look at it. And it has to do with a female lifetime. Why is it so hard for you to look at it? It seems quite simple to me. You re just really, you just keep trying to, de 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 make, you just claw at the picture. You don't want me to see it. So I take the claw and I throw it away. I say, you're not going to do this to yourself. This must be the depression because depression, it's like it just wants to keep you in the dark. That's what depression does, you know. She's just, okay, the picture is really, um, she has an odd cap on her head. It kind of makes me think of a shower cap, but it's made out of fabric. She's an older woman. She has small rounded glasses. She has the most kindest eyes I've ever seen in my life. Is she you or is she maybe somebody that you adored? She has a kind of a purple velvety dress. It's really intense purple color. And she reads stories. She's a w widow, I don't see, I see that she's at peace with her life in her older years and she doesn't seem to have much family. But I see that she comes and reads um, stories to children and the children know, know about her story time. As I see kids that are sitting down and listening to her read and she is very kind. And you really want her to see you. You really want her to see you, you would come and sit down at these story um, gatherings. And it's not a lot of kids. Maybe 10 at most. But it's almost like if she would just know who you were, if she would just notice you, she would just say something to you, it would heal everything for you. I hear that inside a little kid, okay? A little kid who comes to our story time because he wants to be close to a kind old woman. Because I feel like he struggles with family too. This boy does. That you are. She knows though that each one of these kids are struggling and that's why that they're there. And that's why she emanates sweetness because she wants them to know that they aren't alone. 
but for some reason it wasn't enough you wanted to be singled out like you wanted to be seen as the, the one kid who needed the love the most but she knew in her heart all the kids were number one all the kids were number one she tried really hard to to try to help each child know that they were each number one You never got that from her, by the way. You didn't get that feeling like you were number one to her. But she needs you to know that you were always number one. And she shows you each one of you were number one to me. And that's why I came and read to you. Because you mattered to me. This is pretty meaningful, to be honest. It, your soul needed to hear that. About that lifetime that that old woman loved you because you really cherished her. She was like breathing room for what was going on at home, which seems to me that you were always out of the house because you just didn't want to be in the house. And this was something that you found that was nice and you liked her. So that's a past life that I'm called to share with you. Again, mending the heart, mending what hurts in your heart. Again, images of the child like you and doing childlike things, um, knowing how loved you are, knowing that you don't need to fall into this addiction and the best thing you could do for yourself is just separate from it entirely. Just don't go there. It seems vulnerable enough that you would need to, it's like uninstall these apps because you, you're too vulnerable to it. Man, I feel um, kind of next level. I feel uh, really moved by this whole experience. Thank you very much for this. And uh, I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you're going through. Like, Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to learn more about it and learn about how hard this is for you, what you're up against and what you're trying to heal. So this whole experience is to create that genuine fulfillment and give you an opportunity to decide what you're ready for, okay? And be honest with what you're ready for, okay? All right. Thank you so much and thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, if you have anything under the sun, above the sun, any goals at all, I'd be happy to take a look and share some perspective, some wisdom and healing for you. And you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.